ask you about that bitch get up off me man how did you guys because i, I want to just hear the story on, on on how he ended up making that song ricky okay. for you or, or how did you guys end up doing yeah we on boss talk one-on-one ask you about that bitch get up off me man how did you guys because I, I want to just hear the story on, on, on how he ended up making that song with you or okay. for you or, or how did you guys end up doing that? Okay. Um, the gentleman, his name is Ron. Okay. I'm there, here we go. Okay. Yeah. The same Ron, Ron. that through the uh, concert, mm-hmm. Wet and Wild, he was, um, big, he was a big boy. Yeah. Big, big boy. And, but he was quiet. A lot of people didn't know it. And I had grew up with him from junior high school on. So mm-hmm. he, um. Uh, he um, wanted to get into the music industry. And so he said, okay, you know, I told him he knew I was my affiliation. And so, you know, we this is it. You know, we, we worked out all the details. We worked out all the paperwork. Come on down, Chad. So Chad gets to my house. Ron shows up to give him money for his room. Yeah. Right? So we get the money for the room. He don't even come upstairs to meet him. I go downstairs, just get the bread. And we come back up. So we got studio that night. I can remember we were scanning um, Curtis Mayfield's uh, discography, trying to find a sample. Okay. And so he said, oh, I got one. Don't ask me what it was, but because too many blunts away. And, <laughs> <laughs> too, many, too many blunts since then. Yeah. When away, he just found like a little bass line. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He said, this the one. He was funny like that. And so I can remember he made that beat at uh, Dub One Studio standing up in about 15 minutes. Wow. And the guy never showed up to come pay him. Run. Never paid for the studio session. Never paid for nothing. And so he looked at me and said, well, fuck him, Bubba. You can just have a beat. Oh, I looked at him and I said, I can just have it. He said, yeah. And then I can just I sat on that beat for about two years. Wow. Before we recorded it. Yeah. And the night from all the stuff happening from I Know You Strap, that song. Yeah. We were in the uh, presidential suite at the... Uh, Anna told when we came up with the hook, what's up, black, you know, out of Memphis. Okay. You know, female Cut, rapper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's my homegirl. She was she was there, pimp, me, and DJ Bird. Okay. We in the uh, presidential suite, and we come up with the bitch, get up off me hook, and then we go to the studio the next day, and then that's when I lay budget down. Wait. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. So l- let me ask you this. Uh, it was a known fact that on the uh, uh, and and he may never may not have even said nothing to you about this, but when he uh, did that a uh, big pimping with Jay Z, yeah. did you ever talk with him about anything about that? That no. Whole? I'm gonna tell you what, what what he told me and what I do know. Yeah. And I don't know how true it is, you know. But this is what he said. I said I do know, and I said oh, <laughs> that shit contradicts. <laughs> but um, at that time. I don't like talking about stuff like this because I'm married now. And at that time, I was married to someone else. Okay. So, so anyway, um, uh, again, I'm at work at Sears. I'm working. You're at working man, spot. boy. Oh, they, yeah. they love him. He over oh. at Sears making that money. Oh too. yeah, I did. Sears Give it a loop. Years. Give it a loop. Yeah, get, <laughs> get up. Break yourself in. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I um, I'm working at Sears, and by the time I get home, um, well, the song was already out. You know, you know, I I remember being at. The spot on Greenville. I'm a fair, I'm gonna rewind. We at the spot at Greenville. UGK is on concert, and um, I'm standing right there by the DJ. I'm in the DJ booth as they're performing, and we I'm rolling weed in the DJ, yeah, booth, yeah, yeah. And handing it to him on stage, <laughs> and then he say, "Bobo, tell Bird to give you that album." And then I look at this record, and it's a big pimping by. I say, oh, "Wow." This doing the show, yeah. You know, baby. and so they play it that night. Big spending cheap. So fast forward to I'm at work, right? He calls and uh, well, excuse me, I get home, and my wife say at that time, my ex wife says, uh, "Your boy be trying to call you all day." I say, "What?" So I call him back, and he say, "Man, I had Jay Z right here trying to talk to you, man. I'm down here." I say, oh. He wanted Jay to talk to why. Just wanted to talk to I him. don't know why. I don't know what Jay said. Tell me about the dude from the, uh, the yeah, song. Yeah, that song. Yeah. Let me talk to him. That was know. the album that really yeah, touched Jay-Z. Yeah, I don't know. But why? he wanted you to, you and him to talk. I don't know why. I never asked Chad why or uh, what made me come up or anything. 
Just the fact that he said Jay Z wants to talk, he, with, or he wanted me to talk to Jay Z. To Jay Z, yeah, one of the two. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's, that's, that's dope, man. That that's dope to have those type of memories and know yeah. that you that those conversations went on between you and Pimp. Oh, and, he called me. I talked to Chad back then. Oh shoot, for, for, I would say when we befriended each other, if we didn't talk every other night. You know, I know you hear a lot of people say, man, Chad like to call those late nights. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he called those late nights and wouldn't let you off the phone. Mine was every other night. Hey. Mine was every other night sometime. For a long time, it was every night. He just want to talk to you. Well, you the only one I call like this. But then the one, the times that I'm too sleepy, I'm pretty sure it's when he called so me. <laughs> he so, called me every night, man. So yeah, just, he, I, I don't so know did what he, he like the pimping, the big pimping song? Uh, did he uh, love it? He never said he anything never said to he, me. He yeah. just told me, he, you know, everybody knows the story about him not wanting not, to not do it. Not wanting to do it, but mm -hmm. I just wanted to know if he, after it happened, did he, he embrace it, you know? Chad, but he was doing so much, man. Move on to the Chad next was a thing. different yeah. dude, bro. Move on to the next thing. Chad was a different dude, bro. He was truly underground king. Mm -hmm. He never, ever wanted to give bad impression to his fan base. Yeah. He always wanted to stay street. And Southern and Texas, that's it. That's what that's what lock us in right I there. I mean, he represented for Texas and Port Arthur in the South. Yeah, harder than anybody. I, know. I ain't never seen nobody do it like yeah. that in my life. Yeah, I heard uh, DMD say he will. I remember the first time I heard him rapping like that. In other words, he must have had a, a different, style different style. Yeah, at yeah. first. And when he said, I heard him rapping like that, that must have been that Southern Brawl. Yeah, he wasn't trying to hear it at nah, that point. Oh, man, but that Southern Brawl is what made what, us. What, what made, yeah. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101.